really want to talk to you both about is what's been holding you back. Let's talk about your work and the transition between work and here. But you walk into the house with the same militant attitude that you deal with outside. And it's your four-year-old toddlers. It's so severe. I mean, a child as young as Peter and Deanna can't comprehend that. You've got to shake it off. You've got to shake it off. Do you not feel that? I feel it. I guess I just find it difficult to try to get that balance. What can I change? You've got to change wanting change. You're a man that doesn't like change. No. I want to talk about your parenting together. This whole good cop, bad cop situation mm -hmm. is crazy. Neither of you take what you have, those qualities, and work together. Even if we try, it's different. She has her way and I have my way. And... So if you can show us how to work together as a team as, so that we can be on the same page. That's the middle that I'm looking for. Let's talk about Clarissa. Trust is a big issue in this house. Mm -hmm. Clarissa, she's a smart cookie. But if she's got a dad who doesn't trust her, then, you know, what does that say about the trust that she's going to have in herself? In life, she's going to make decisions. And some of them are not going to be that wise. And some of them will be. But the fact is that you raise a competent child to make decisions herself. It's very true. Any questions? When do we start? <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow morning. Okay. The first thing I do want to talk to you about is discipline, because I don't see anything that's effective. And the empty threats have got to stop, because stop, no, don't do that, doesn't have any meaning in this house. It means carry on. And all the authority is now in the hands of police officer Smith and Jones. I mean, what's that all about? It was a tool that we used in order to get some attention, to get their attention. It worked. How long do you think it's going to be before they turn around and say, I don't care, bring Officer Smith to the door? What are you going to do then? What are you going to do? You're going to dress up <laughs> as Officer Smith? It's ludicrous. Instead of taking ownership of the authority yourself, you've given it to some imaginary policeman. Step up to the plate yourselves. We want to. The next thing that I want to talk about is the time and place. If there's no balance of the times when they are told, OK, we go out, we can have fun now, it's all great, go for it, boys, and then we come to this place, and actually this is what's expected from you now, because we're in a place where these are the rules. When we're in a restaurant, we X, Y and Z, table manners, we keep our volume to a certain level. But there are no rules here, so why do they respect rules anywhere else? Not taught them. They don't know a time and a place. There's no awareness of others. We have to teach our children that. I understand. Let's talk about yourself, Adam. The problem for you is how you learn to manage your frustration. You don't respond to the kid's behavior in a way that's effective to bring about the change. I agree. Yelling and getting you know, frustrated is not the answer. It's not because it's creating, it's creating more hostility. That's not allowing you to feel good about fatherhood and the way you're connecting with your boys and raising them. Right. You're reacting emotionally to how they're behaving instead of just stepping back and using the skill that you use in your job. You need to make decisions and respond to what's before you. Absolutely. Not react emotionally, <clears throat> because if every firefighter reacted emotionally, you wouldn't be saving lives. We'd be losing some of our own. Correct. Shelby, you know what you're doing wrong. I just feel really inadequate as a parent. I don't think I do anything right. Everybody says enjoy these years because they go fast. But I'm not enjoying them. This is about how you choose to respond to your children's behavior, how you interact with them, because you are the adult, you are their mother, and you need to be 
Mrs Big around here. Are you prepared to work together? Absolutely. So we will work together very hard for the next week and we will do what's necessary for not just the kids' sakes, but for yours as well. Are we in? Yes. Absolutely. 100%. 100%. 10%. Thank you. Thanks. So I think we should get straight to the point because there's certainly no time to waste here. Responsibilities. When the pair of you got together, it was about how you were going to manage together. What happened to that? Well, somebody better speak, because what happened to the pair of you recognising that you have responsibilities? I don't know, I think maybe we became so overwhelmed by them that it was just easier to let them kind of run the routine the way they wanted it. I mean, let's just look at the chores. You guys don't work out who will do what. How many hours do you work? Eric? 60 hours a week. 60 hours a week. And how many hours do you work at home? The same. More. All day, all night. Really? And then you woke up and realised you were dreaming, you mean? <laughs> yeah. I don't find it funny. I, I think, well, my day doesn't end sometimes. What do you mean your day don't end? It don't bloody begin. You spent time on the phone. Mm -hmm. You spent time just walking around the house, up and down. You spent time walking back and forth from a dining table with your kids. I mean, quite frankly, I don't know what you do with your hours. But I tell you one thing as a woman, if my husband's working, I do want to make sure that I'm doing what I should be doing at home. You're and right. if now I'm making you think about that, because this is the first time I've seen you become emotional, because it's the first time you've even had to sit and think about your actions. You're right. And you need to be able to do that. Let's talk about the development of the twins. You've got the kids on pacifiers. Binky galore in this house. When you're looking at your son and he's got chapped lips that have split and broken, when you're actually having to tell your children to take the binkies out of their mouth because you can't hear them, at what point doesn't the light bulb switch on? I didn't think the binkies was that, was that major of a issue. You would rather they have the binky rather than cry, even if it's damaging them health-wise. I can't even defend myself, so. That's crazy. You have a son who's 13 years old, and I do want to talk about little Eric. There's no purpose of him feeling he can come and talk to you about things that he's going through as a teenager. I go down to his bedroom yesterday to talk to him, and I see two condoms. Emotionally, he's still a 13-year-old. I don't know a way to get through to him, or a way to, to talk to him the right way. What do you expect from me? I think to most me, of all, we want exist. you to teach us how to teach, teach them. them. I want them to have boundaries. I want them to feel loved. I want them to feel that we respect them, and I want them to respect us. If I am to teach you, then you are to come into my classroom, in your home, to listen, to give me a 100% commitment, to take direction, to follow through, and to not give up. And we will. I'll see you bright and early. Maddie you. rules roost. When she wants, however she wants, and for how long she wants. Maddie needs to be put back in her place. She does, James. Yes, she does, yeah. The behaviour's got to stop. I mean, it has got to stop. It's not OK for your kids to hit you. It's not OK for them to slap you. The relationships are broke down. Because it's, we've let it get so far that if we try to uh, turn it around sort of thing, we, it, it's more of a thing of try, afraid to turn it, try to turn it around ourselves. Can you actually hear what you're saying? Yeah, we know the problems. But listen to the operative words you're using. It I'm fearful yeah. to turn it around. We don't want to turn it around. Who do you think's going to turn it around? You're her parents. What do you think? The neighbour down the road's going to do it? 
I mean, I'm sitting here talking to Mary Shelley. You've already created Frankenstein. Mm. Let's face it, you know, children are not like a bottle of red wine. You don't just stick it on a shelf and go, well, I'll just wait a couple of years and it might mature. No. Yeah. If she can't rely on you two, who she can she rely on? Nobody. That's your job. Mm. Yeah. That's your responsibility as parents. But mm. you walk on eggshells with her and Harry gets pushed to the side. Yeah. yeah, does, yeah. So I wonder why Harry explodes. Like, well, yeah. Harry's sitting there begging someone to take control. One of my parents do something because I can't do nothing. Your relationship, Hayley, with Maddie. Yeah. I don't doubt that you love her very much. Yeah. And that she loves you very much. Yeah. However, you do have her one minute acting like a nine-year-old and the next minute you're treating her like a baby. Yeah. There's so many things that you do for her that you don't allow her to do for herself. You were cutting up her food like you do for a toddler. Why? I Why? think I think possibly um, when I lost my son, I lost a little boy, and when I, and when I went on to have Madison, I think I just did. I just, it's just, I just did a natural thing. I just thought it was. I just did it all. I just do it all for her, and I think that's probably why. You've got to find peace with that. You have to lay things yeah. down to rest. Yeah. When the impact of that affects so much, yeah. and the jeopardy of that is, is so high. Yeah. You can't wrap kids up in, in cotton wool 24-7. You'll stop them from growing, from learning life I know, experiences. I know, that's what, I know, this is what I've done, I know. I can give you the tools that's necessary to resolve the situation, but I can't do that alone because it takes two willing parents. We are willing and we will do it. And we'll, we will do it. And you've got to want to do it for yourselves because we, we I do. leave. We do. Yeah. They're your yeah. children. Yeah. Joe, we need this and we will do it and we will continue it because this house ain't going to be like this anymore. Hi. Hi. Joe. So let's get straight down to business. Deep down, none of you are happy. The kids are sad, the kids are angry, and actually the pair of you are not doing your job together. You chose to have these kids, to raise them. Oh, yeah. I thought it was gonna be easy. I yeah. thought they were gonna be well behaved. You get married, you have kids, and everything's great. Who told you that? Normally. Just the way I grew up, fairy tale, and I had no idea it was going to be so much work. Do you know what? I just, I really, I find that hard to believe. I just don't see no enthusiasm. There's nothing interesting about you being around your kids. You have three children who need their parents' interaction, who need to connect with you emotionally, mentally, who need you to feel like you give a damn being with them. You're uninteresting. Seriously, Diane. Watching you with the kids, your face is, your, your, the lights are on and no one's at home. There is not an ounce of enthusiasm for you being around the kids, not an ounce. Everything's an effort. Well, it is. Think. They won't stay happy for more than five minutes. I can't please them. I don't no think I'd be happy. I, I can't please them no matter what I do. I get on the floor, I play, I call her. There was no enthusiasm. It was like, oh, I've got to do this because I'm supposed to do this. Not that you wanted to do it. You didn't want to do it. You didn't want to do anything with your kids. And no, they see that. It's not true. It is. I don't agree with that. There is no effort there. I love my kids and I get on the floor, I color with them, I play with them. You know them. what? Seriously? I'm more of the activity person. I'm very creative as far as coloring and arts and crafts. Where was it yesterday? Where was it when I was observing you? Where was it? Yesterday was one day. No, where was it? I don't, I, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's not happening. It's heartbreaking for them. But also, you're missing out. You know what I'm talking about, because you're sitting here getting emotional. You're getting emotional because you know. You know what your boys are missing. You know what your boys ain't getting. Kids need it. Yeah. We do love them very much. Well, I talk a good talk. 
but I can walk a good walk. And right up until now, you guys have been talking a good talk, but I need you guys to be walking it. So are we in or are we out? Because we don't have time to waste here. Okay. I'm in and I'm ready. Right, then let's get to work. Thank you. Don't we get straight down to business and discuss discipline. You have no authority. No. They don't take you seriously. No. You are a pushover. Yes. But when Dad comes home, it's a different story. They do as they're told. Because to get a belt, to get a spoon, hurts. Now, I ask you this. Is it necessary? Is it necessary that you have to inflict that pain on your kid in order for them to listen to you? Sometimes it is necessary. Tell me why. If you don't understand verbal instructions, maybe you need a little attention getter. If I could teach you guys a discipline technique that meant that we could throw away Mr. Spoon, would that not be an option for you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the time you're spending at work. There's no doubt in my mind that you have a very strong work ethic, but at what cost? Sharon, what do you need from John? Time. What would time make you feel? Happy that he was here and not there. That we would be together as a family that the kids would have their dad. John. The way I see it, mm -hmm. I don't know how long the gravy train's gonna last. Mm -hmm. I could be gone tomorrow from my job and then having to foreclose on the house because I don't have a job. I totally understand what you're saying with regards to the economy. You can still be fully committed with what you do at the church. It's about finding the balance. Can we work with that? Sure. Let's talk about safety and your pool. We're very, very vigilant with the pool. That's not the case. And as quick as it takes you to come inside the house and use the powder room, it's as quick as it takes for Thomas to drown in that pool. Florida has the highest rate, the highest rate of children between the age of one and four of drowning. And those deaths happen when the parents just take their eyes for a minute. This is a wake up call now. Let's, let's do better now. Yeah. So a lot of things that have been talked about today with regards to what we could do to certainly make it a more contented household. But I can't do it on myself. No. I need two willing parents <laughs> who are committed. I'm ready. You're ready? Let's Good. let the healing begin. All right, you're ready. So we better get busy, right? Got a lot of work ahead. Okay, I'll see you soon.